ever wrestled a baby octopus? That's what it feels like trying to get my daughter into clothing on any ordinary day. And this was no ordinary day. It was her first birthday. And this was no ordinary clothing. It was her birthday dress. Now the clock is ticking. And the photographer is going to be ringing the doorbell any second now. And then the guests are going to come through the door straight afterwards. And I'm stuck in the lilac room with flowers and fairy lights, wrestling a baby octopus. And I have gotten the most gorgeous, perfect first birthday dress too. Shiny sequins and a big poofy skirt. And every time I think I've gotten one arm into this rose gold sequin sleeve, I'm suddenly being pushed away by two unsleeved arms by my daughter, and she's strong too. And I'm, the clock is ticking, and I'm trying to reason with her. This dress is gorgeous, it suits you so well, you're gonna be so adorable. Come on, baby, mama needs to go put on some makeup before all the guests get here, please. I promise this is gonna be great, this is all for you, you'll thank me later. <laughs> And I'm getting sweatier, and on top of the sweatiness of just having run around the house, gathered a thousand toys. I don't know how she's got a thousand toys in just one year. Um, and disassembled this great wall of china that my um, husband and I have assembled to keep her contained. It's made out of furniture, unopened Amazon boxes, um, laundry baskets, with clean, dirty clothes, who knows anymore. Anyway, I've taken all this down and returned the furniture to its normal configuration, and I've hung the birthday banner, and I've laid the table with my hand-painted birthday signs, and the cake, this cake, I rebaked three times. Once because I put in this parchment paper, and it took the wobbly shape of the parchment paper instead of the circle of the pan. Twice without the parchment paper, but then that darn lemon layer broke right down the middle when I took it out, probably a little too soon. But the third time is the charm. And then I spent some time that night icing it and carefully placing every gummy heart and sugar flower and sugar rainbow. And it was gorgeous and delicious, darn it. My niece and nephew confirmed that. Um, and so back to this tug of war. I'm pulling and she's pulling and then we stop and we stare at each other. She is two feet and has seven teeth, and I'm a grown woman. Then she pulls out her winning move. She starts to cry. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's take a step back here. I comfort her. We take a little break, and then I try again, this time with bribery, and it works. So I get her into the stress, and as I'm taking off the changing mat and placing her on the floor, she grabs a handful of poofy tulle skirt, raises it and an eyebrow, and this clear, non-verbal communication. I'm like, seriously, mom? And I'm like, oh, you are wearing this dress. Go off and play. I won. I won. I won. Have you ever gotten this feeling of deja vu? I got it right then. And this was kind of a reverse deja vu with a twist. So let me tell you about this. So first, the reverse deja vu. I realized that I'd heard these words before, you will wear this dress, coming out of my mom's mouth and aimed at me at my 21st birthday. This wasn't the first time we'd had that conversation, but it would be the last. And I really didn't want to wear this dress that my mom picked out for me. I didn't want the party in the backyard of our house, it was below street level, and I grew up in an apartheid segregated community in South Africa. And I really didn't want this party, because I, I just didn't want to be the center of attention. And I was arguing with my mom, and this was a big deal, because in the time and the, the kind of conservative community I grew up in, you obey your parents and you never leave home until you're married. So um, this was a big deal, and we argued but I ended up insisting, and I won. So I just wore pants instead of the dress that my mom picked out for me, and I felt pretty good about it, st standing my ground. And I left home a few months later to move to Johannesburg and eventually to DC. 
But it always kind of bugged me. And I started to feel guilty about it. And I thought about it a lot after that night. Now back to my daughter's birthday though, everyone who walked through the door declared that she was adorable in that dress. <laughs> and I was feeling pretty good. I took a moment, I looked around at all my hard work and how well everything was going. And then I noticed my baby and she was walking around a little awkwardly, not at her usual speed. She was kind of hesitant when trying to reach for a toy because that big teal skirt was kind of between her and everything else. So I made a decision. I sped up the photo taking and I whisked her back to her room and I quickly changed her into a onesie that my 21 year old self would be pretty happy about. It said, I love naps, milk, and social justice, and uh, a shorter skirt and sneakers. And then she was running around seconds later at her usual top speed. And then I, here comes the twist. I was wondering, why had this been so important to me when my mom had actually passed away six weeks before her only granddaughter's first birthday? Under these circumstances, I wouldn't normally have had a party or a celebration, but my mom, Anandavali Naika, loved celebrating her children's birthdays and making them incredibly special. You'd wake up to a room full of balloons. You never knew what was going to happen. And, but there would always be a custom-baked cake that she'd stay up late baking and presents and new clothes. And when I grew up, at the time I grew up, we only got new clothes on our birthdays. So it was really, really exciting. And in my family, we didn't say, I love you, but, we, but I knew on my birthday that I would be getting a beautiful new birthday dress. Thank you. <laughs>